Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to reveal some secrets about patterns in Illustrator. We're going to look at some patterns that look like they can't be recolored and I'll show you how to recolor them. I'll show you how you can use live color with patterns. I'll show you how you can move and scale and rotate patterns. And I'll also show you how you can use some of the patterns that are shipped with Illustrator and blend them in to create interesting effects. To begin our look at patterns in Illustrator, we're going to look first at some of the patterns that actually are shipped with Illustrator. I have my swatches panel open here and you can open yours by choosing Window and then Swatches. And there's a little fly out menu here. If I select it, I can go to Open Swatch Library and then to Patterns. And these are some patterns that are shipped with Illustrator. There are some basic graphics, for example, basic graphics lines and dots. And there are some textures. Now these are all pretty similar, so I'm just going to open up all of these and just show them to you on the screen. And I'm just going to pause the video while I do that. And at the same time, I'm also going to open up all these other patterns that come with Illustrator, the decoratives and the nature, so that we can see exactly what we have that we can work with. So now I've opened up all these patterns and we're just going to look through them. These are the basic graphic dots. Then we've got basic graphic lines, which are some lines and grids. We've got some textures here, which include some really interesting textures that you may want to use. We have decorative legacy, which are sort of more graphical patterns. They're multicolored patterns. You may think that because of the colors, you won't want to use them, but I'm going to show you a way of using them where you can kill the color if you don't like it. Vonster patterns are another set of patterns. You've got nature, animal skins, and nature foliage. So these are the patterns that are shipped with Illustrator that you can get access to. And we're going to look at how to use them and how to recolor them as well. So with my shape still selected, I'm going to choose a different pattern. So I'm going to choose this pattern, which is called Plume, and it's from Vonster Patterns. Again, I can transform and scale it if I want to. I'm going to turn Preview on. I don't want it to be 300%. I'm going to bring it all the way down to much less even than 100%. I'm going to bring it down to about 50%. I'm only transforming the pattern, not the shape, and I'll click OK. Now, if, for example, I like the overall pattern, but I'm not liking the colors, well, I can do something with it. And one way that I can work with it is to open the Appearance panel for this shape. We get to the Appearance panel by choosing Window and then Appearance. Now, the benefit of looking at the Appearance panel is that I can add a second fill to this shape. So I can just click here to add a new fill. By default, it is the same fill as we had before, but it doesn't have to stay that way. I can add a color to my image. So I can, for example, let's go and add a pink color to the image. Now this fill is on top of the other fill, and so it's just blocked it out. If I open this fill area here, I can get to the opacity settings. And what this allows me to do is a few things, one of which is to decrease the opacity of this fill layer so I can start to see the other layer through it. And just because of the mix of colors here, we're actually using this pink to sort of recolor the pattern. And so you may say, well, that's exactly what I want, so I'm going to finish off here. Now the other option is to combine these layers together to use the pink layer to blend in with the pattern layer and darken blend mode will make it darker. It will bring forward the darkest elements. Multiply will multiply the colors together. White and black will stay constant. The other colors will be darkened by the process and color burn. That's bringing out some of the original purples but also coloring it with some pink. This set of blend modes are the lightning blend modes. These result in a lightning effect. That's really interesting effect there. Screen will always lighten, and then color dodge. And then we have some other blend modes. These are the contrast blend modes in here. Overlay, soft light, 
and hard light. And then we have difference and exclusion, again bringing up some really interesting blends where we're blending the pink colour with our purple blue pattern. Exclusion. And then we can choose to take the hue, saturation, colour and luminosity. So if you like the original pattern but you preferred a different colour, this colour option here is allowing you to essentially recolour the original pattern with your pink, although of course you've lost your white in the process. So you could choose any of these settings that you like. I'm just going to use the lighten one here. And of course you can combine a blend mode with an opacity. So you can, for example, use a 50% opacity and a lighten blend mode. You can also add more layers on top if you want to, but there's one way of recolouring a pattern by adding a fill layer and then blending the fill colour in with the pattern underneath. There are other ways, however, of adjusting a pattern. So I'm going to go back here. Let's actually just duplicate this shape so that we can keep it in place. I'm just going to hide this version of it. So in the Layers palette I'm just going to turn this one off and let's go back to this one. And I'm going back just to the original pattern, the purple pattern that we had here. I've tossed my pink fill layer. Now with most of the multicolour patterns, although not noticeably with the dots, graphics, lines and textures, but with these other patterns and with other patterns that you create yourself, you can recolour them using live colour. To do this I'm going to take my original shape and I'm going to click here on the new colour group button and I want to create my colour group from the selected artwork so I'll just click OK. And here is a colour group created based on my artwork. Now I can click the edit or apply colour group button and this allows me to do things such as to rotate the colours within my pattern. So I've still got the original pattern colours, it's just that they're being remapped to different areas of the pattern. And then there's an option here for randomly changing saturation and brightness. So I can adjust the saturation and brightness of the colours just randomly here. I can also click here on Edit and Edit allows me to change the colours. Now if I leave everything locked down and just drag on this, I can remap the colours. I'm keeping the same relationship between my colours but instead of a bluish pattern I'm coming in and getting a green one or a turquoise one or a red yellow one over here. Now if I unlock these and click unlink harmony colours, then I can take the colours wherever I want them to go. So I could say, well these sort of bronze colours in this image, I would prefer that they were turquoise. So let's walk them over to turquoise and let's take these to sort of green, but let's throw in some red for some contrast. So I can entirely remap the colours in this pattern just using the swatches group here create a new swatch from the image and then go into edit or apply colour group and go and change the colours. Now as I said that's not going to work for these graphic dots, graphic lines and so on. Let's just create a brand new small rectangle here. I'm going to fill it with my dots. I'm going to try here and go and create a new colour group, which I can do, but it's a colour group just with black in it. When I click on Edit or Apply, you'll see that I'm not able to change these colours. If I go into Edit and try and make this a different colour, even increasing its brightness, grabbing green, it's having no effect at all on this artwork. So that's not the way to change these colours. But there is a way of changing those colours if you know how. And the way that you can change these colours is to grab this pattern swatch and just drag and drop it into the document. Instead of dragging and dropping it into a shape, we're just grabbing the swatch itself. Let's now resize this so we can see clearly what our swatch looks like. 
Now I'm going to click on this and I'm going to double click on these shapes because I want to isolate these shapes themselves. And now with the fill color selected, let's just go and grab a fill color. So I'm going to make these dots, for example, this green color. And now I want to click on each other one of these so that I'm making sure that all the pieces in my pattern swatch are colored the same way. Let's go back and select this swatch. And now I'm going to drag and drop it into the swatches panel. I can't put it in here, but I can put it in here. So I'm just going to drag and drop it into position in the swatches panel. Now I can delete the coloring group that I used there. Let's go back to the full size image. Go back to seeing the shapes here. Get out of isolation mode. And with this filled shape selected, that's this time go and get our green dots. And now the dots are recolored. Now the benefit of having created a new pattern swatch by simply recoloring one of the could not otherwise be recolored pattern swatches is that this new version of the pattern swatch can be recolored. Just going to resize the pattern a little bit in here so that we can see it a little more clearly. I'm not going to transform my objects, but I am going to size up my pattern quite a bit. Not worried about these little white lines that keep appearing through my pattern because they're not consistent. They don't stay in the same place all the time, which tells me it's just a problem that my screen is having in actually rendering those patterns correctly. It won't be in the output result. So with this shape selected, I'm going to again go and create a new color group. And again, it's going to be colors from the selected artwork. And here is my green color. But let's look what happens when we go into the recolor dialog this time and we go into edit. Well, it's possible for me to change the dots now to any color that I like. So I've been able to take the benefit of a dot pattern that has already been created for me by Adobe and is shipped with Illustrator. And now I've made it into a pattern that can be recolored. And I can do that using this recolor dialog so I can take it to any set of colors that I like. And of course, it's going to behave exactly the same way as that other pattern did in terms of allowing me to add another color to this shape. So with the shape selected, I'm just going to add another color and I'm going to give it for example, a gray fill. And then I'm going to adjust the blend mode here. And let's go with something like color burn or color dodge. And so I can get a sort of filled shape where it's got a fill color behind it, but it's also blending in with this pattern. Now, if I didn't want to blend and I just wanted my pattern on top of my fill, all I need to do in the appearance panel is to grab this pattern filled layer and drag it up so it is above the fill layer. So this allows me to take a pattern which is transparent, it's pink dots and transparent background, and add a background of my own choice. It's just placing the fill dots on top of the background so that we can see both those elements. So there's a whole lot of interesting stuff that you can do with even the shipped patterns in Illustrator. You'll find that I have lots more video tutorials on how to create patterns of your own. And all of these techniques are going to work just exactly the same with your own patterns as they do with the patterns that are shipped with Illustrator. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.